Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, Talofa and warm greetings from Tuvalu. I would like to thank the organizers and hosts of the 78th session of the ESCA for giving me the opportunity to speak on behalf of my country, Tuvalu. Tuvalu remains at the forefront of climate change with efforts to curb the threats to our existing people and people. The Tuvalu National Strategy for Sustainable Development, the KETEN, outlines the priority areas that have been set as the foundation and vision for Tuvalu from today until 2030. We envision a peaceful, resilient and prosperous Tuvalu, a shared vision for the region. The Kete reminds the Tuvalu people of the simple traditional life setting inherited from our forefathers. It allows us to re-evaluate and focus more on the strengthening of the basic structures of our society first and by reviving and applying our cultural practices and values. Telling the poor soil of our atoll land, making optimum use of our inshore and ocean fisheries, fostering the maintenance of our pristine atoll environment, and mainstreaming our traditional governance system to work harmoniously with our adopted parliamentary democratic institutions. The Kete challenges all citizens to recognize that each one of us has a role to play. And through unity, bring strength and consistent cooperation in achieving our national vision. Tuvalu's development is grounded in an enabling environment for sustainable development, economic development, social development, and inclusion, islands and culture, and infrastructure development. These national priorities identify the intrinsic needs of our people with the foresight that also mirror the shared values and interests of our region. We therefore must look to our values, our communities and our core identities to provide our people with the necessary principles that make our culture unique and uh, to value. These values have often been shared to value basis its foreign policies on the fallibility concept which promotes partnership and collaboration with our neighbors and allows us to understand and utilize existing regional mechanisms to ensure that we leave no one behind. We must develop a common agenda for advancing sustainable development for all. Our key priorities here are digital transformation, or the need to strengthen communication services and e-commerce and trading services. In Tuvalu, we hope that all sectors can contribute to creating innovative adaptation strategies to mitigate the effects of climate change on stability and social cohesion. Science and technology, especially ICT, are areas that can be highly promising in the fight against climate change and sea level rise to sustain international peace and stability. We must also focus on sub-regional cooperation and promoting sustainable development for all. Through the Samoa pathway, we can center climate change, oceans, and aligning our priorities with the blue oceans. We can also better comprehend that and understand the necessity for insurance so that we can remain silent against disasters. Recently, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change produced its latest report on the status of climate change across the globe. The report reiterates that we already know and are experiencing in Tuvalu climate change is causing more frequent and severe storms, floods, 
droughts and extreme weather events. However, what is perhaps most troubling about the latest report is that warming temperatures are leading to compound extremes. This is when multiple climate hazards occur simultaneously in the same place. They affect multiple regions at the same time or occur in a sequence. Climate change is the single greatest exponential threat of our time. We must work harder through our sub-regional and regional mechanism and uh, stand in solidarity to address climate change more effectively. Finally, we must ensure that our financial structures are aligned and protected in the midst of COVID-19. We must adopt advanced control measures to protect our people, despite the many health challenges we face. The establishment of mechanisms to cushion and buffer national financing as a result of COVID-19 and the challenges it has posed to economic development have been an important lesson for us. It is critical that regional and sub-regional organizations work hand-in-hand -hand with national government to support and achieve economic stability. I therefore call for more genuine and durable partnerships. We are global citizens and countries facing similar challenges can no longer address threats on our own. We must not take matters lightly, and we must work harder together through partnerships and collaborations that will bring benefits to our people, protect our islands, and build a safer place for our generations to come. May God bless Tuvalu and all members of the ESCAP. Thank you, and Fafdailah.